Hello everybody, my name is Carlos and I'm from Casa Luz Church. Thank you guys for joining today. Uh, we love and miss you guys so much and I personally can't wait till the day we're finally be able to be together in person and just laugh, worship, and uh, play board games with each other again. Um, if you're here for the first time, uh, welcome. We would love to get, uh, get to know more about you and uh, possibly get your contact information. Uh, before the service begins, I just wanna just give a quick word and just uh, pray before Pastor Tony speaks. So today I'll be reading uh, Psalms 31, 1 through 5 and 15 to 16. And it says, In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. In your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. And the 15 through 16 says, My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. So every single verse um, of this chapter that I just read is just reassuring peace for me. I also noticed that uh, David, he, um, he states some requests and some declarations. For example, he, some of the requests that he says is never let me be put to shame. He says, come quickly to my rescue. And he says, deliver me from the hands of my enemies. And even though Jesus doesn't explicitly reply to him here in Psalms, I know that, you know, through these requests that Jesus answers through the person that he is and by the love that he has for us, that he showed for us on the cross. And then uh, some declarations that he says is that, uh, for example, when he says, since you are my rock of fortress, and when he says, for you are my refuge. Just those simple declarations just solidify my peace, you know, knowing that Jesus loves me and he loves you and that uh, we can always go to him for anything um, and that he's our refuge at all times and he's willing to meet us where we are. Uh, so I'll, I'll just finish off with some praying before Pastor Tony uh, speaks. Uh, thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for this service, Lord. Um, I just wanna thank you for just giving us another day of life. Uh, thank you, for Lord, for these words, uh, just knowing that you are a refuge, Lord, and that uh, you love us so much, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that that your love, Lord, is just what wants us to, Lord, to want to follow you more, to obey you, Lord, to obey you, Lord, and to want to um, respect you more, Lord. Um, I pray, Lord, that um, uh, whether it's Lois or Pastor Tony or whoever else is speaking, Lord, that you may speak through them, Lord. And that you may uh, just convict, uh, you may you may convict us, Lord, of the sin that we are struggling with, Lord, and that we are able to get closer to you, God. Uh, bless the service, Lord, and also pray, Lord, uh, bless all those who are watching, Lord. Um, be their refuge, Lord, in whatever circumstance or difficult situation that they're going through, Lord. Um, all of this, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'll pass it off to Pastor Tony. Good morning, everyone. What a privilege to join you today as we worship our God, as we remember His goodness, as we celebrate uh, His love for us, as we remember our Lord Jesus Christ and His life and resurrection, uh, what He's done for us as we join together, even uh, if we're separated in, in presence, as we join together in the common life of Christ to worship Him. And one of our practices as we worship the Lord is to confess our sins to Him, not only to sing praises, not only to remember, but to come before Him with a humble heart and confess our sins to Him. So I'm going to share a scripture with you that is found in Psalm 51. And just as I read the first few verses, I invite you to think about um, your relationship with the Lord and to have an opportunity to confess your sins to Him. This is only to bring uh, to our lives the, uh, the grace of God and the mercy of our God. If you are away from Him this morning, this is the best time for you to come and uh, receive grace and forgiveness. Psalm 51, uh, King David is writing and he says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sins. For I know my transgressions I'm, and my sin is always before me. Against you, only against you have I sinned and done what is evil in your side. Lord, cleanse us 
as we remember you. Lord, wash us, wash away our sins as we rejoice in you. Will you join me in prayer this morning as we confess our sins to the Lord? And right after that, we're going to go into a time of worship and celebration. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before your presence this morning. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by the things we have done and the things we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We haven't loved our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, we confess to you we have participated directly or indirectly of hurting others. Father, we pray that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Give us hearts to follow you, Lord. Make us humble before your presence. Lord, we recognize that we have forgotten your word. We have been um, careless with your gospel. We pray that you will forgive us and give us the ability to continue proclaiming the news of Jesus Christ as our Lord. Grant your faithful people merciful, Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having received the grace of our God and the forgiveness of sins, we invite you now into a time of worship. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you all. Thank you, Pastor Tony. Um, like he said, we're going to go into a time of worship and we'll be singing a song called Build My Life. Um, and so we hope that you uh, sing along because we're singing to God and to no one else. Um, this song is all for God. And so we pray that you um, join in song with your, fr with your family, with your friends, um, with whoever you're with, um, or if you're by yourself, sing to God. Um, and also, we want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Um, so here is Build My Life, and we hope you enjoy this time of worship. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above everything. 
this next part of the song, just proclaim it to God that we will build our life upon him, upon him because he is a firm foundation and he never moves and he won't let us be moved. so much for allowing us to have you as our firm foundation you promise that you will never forsake us God you never leave us and you love us God so thank you for that reality for the reality we live in God where your love is so real and so deep and let us remember your love every single day and your forgiveness God you're just so full of everything we need and we just thank you Jesus you are worthy of everything we can ever give you but we can't even present anything like we don't have anything to give except for our lives and our heart we love you and we thank you for this day in Jesus' name we pray amen amen um so now we're going to read um a part of the gospel um it's in john 14 verses 1 through 14 so if you want to join us in 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 reading these verses john 14 verses 1 through 14. And it says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Jesus is speaking, by the way. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will and will take you to myself so that where I am there you may be also and you know the way to the place where I am going Thomas said to him Lord we do not know where you are going how can we know the way Jesus said to him I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me if you know me you will know my father also from now on, you do, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me, uh, me uh, <laughs> you ask me for anything, I will do it. Amen. 
Amen. <laughs> that's so that's so much to process and so much to let your heart receive. So I pray that um, you receive the words of Jesus today. And um, now we're going to go over to Hanny. We're going to go over to Hannah and she has a beautiful word for us today um, as well. So take it away, Hannah. Hi everyone. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Sunday. Um, now we're going to go into a time of confession of faith and I'm going to be reading the Apostles' Creed. Um, so if you have it available, just read along with me. So it says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead and on the third day rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, and the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrections of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I hope the Apostles' Creed encourages you guys today, and I want you all to remember um, that we're praying for you um, and that we all miss you and we miss joining together as a community. Um, now I'm just going to end with the time of just praying, praying for all of you. So if you can close your eyes and bow your heads. Dear God, I just thank you for this day, God. I thank you that we're able to come together and remember you each and every Sunday, Lord, that we have the opportunity to come to you with our worries, our concerns, our problems, our fears and anxiety, Lord. I pray for, I thank you for this time, God, that we can just, even though we're not physically together, Lord, that we can just meet um, even though it's online. I pray that you comfort us through our time of need, God. I pray, thank you for providing us with a safe place to be, Lord. Um, some of us, however, God, that we're just not in the safe place at home, Lord. I pray for those people who aren't. I pray that you protect them, that you guide their hearts and their minds, um, and you help them get out that situation, Lord. I, th I pray for people that are being affected by this um, financially, Lord. I pray that you give them comfort and provide for them um, and assist them, God, through whatever they're going through, Lord. Um, I thank you again, God. Thank you just for dying for the cross and just remembering us in our time of need, Lord. Um, thank you, name. Amen. All right, guys. Um, hope to see you soon. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Hannah, for saying those words of confession of faith. Um, it's really special when we're able to recite the Apostles' Creed uh, like she just did. And now we're going to go into a time of just going into God's Word and seeing what the Lord has for us. But before we do that, I would love to pray with all of you. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for allowing us to just be here, uh, be present, Lord. I just pray that all distractions may go away at this time and that we're able to focus uh, on the word that you have for us today, God. Let us, let us be mindful of what we're doing. Let us be mindful of what we're hearing, God, and let our hearts open up to what your word says. Lord Jesus, we, we thank you. Uh, we praise you today. Uh, we just give you all the glory forever and ever. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Today, it is a pleasure, it's a pleasure being with all of you on this lovely afternoon. And although we've been doing this for quite some time, um, it's just beautiful to see that no pandemic, no situation, no circumstance is going to get in the way of our worship towards our God. Nothing will stand in our way with the relationship, with our relationship with the living God. Echoing the words of the Apostle Paul, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither the height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing, nothing can separate the love 
the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that amazing? That's such a beautiful thing. And as we continue this series, as we continue remembering Christ and Him crucified, it is very important that we hold on to this truth, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We have the, the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6 says. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is a beautiful reminder today, and this is what I believe God is telling us right now in this moment, that His ways are far beyond our ways. His 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 ways are, are better than our ways. And we trust in that today. We place our faith that His ways are better than our own. Eternal life is in Him and through Him. These are the things that we believe as Christians. These are the things that make us Christians. They're the core of our belief. A little bit ago, as we were just saying, Hannah was reading from the Apostles' Creed. And in it, we proclaim the first part. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. He has created heaven and earth. He has made all living things. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. Our Lord. He's the one that reigns. He is the one that goes first. This is the one that we're praising today. But what I really want us to focus on is that last part of the Apostles' Creed, which says the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Life everlasting. I got stuck on that part. Life everlasting. And the reason why I got stuck on that part is because this is the promise that Jesus leaves you and me when he says that through him, we can have life everlasting. And as I just said, the last five weeks have been beautiful because we've been able to celebrate this beautiful truth that is so ever present in our life. But if we could be real for one second, if we can be honest with ourselves, there are doubts that come along on this faith journey. I can say this with confidence, that at one point or another, you probably have had your doubts about the faith. And I'm not talking about, it could be, don't get me wrong, it could be small doubts. But it can also be like doubts that are tough. I'm talking hard questions that really make you consider like, what is life even about? I know this, these questions could come up because of university, uh, the university you're in a class and a professor is telling you things that you've never heard before. And you're like, whoa, like, I, I don't know what's going on. Or maybe it's social media. And uh, you see something on social media that you're like, whoa, I've never seen that type of content before. I don't know if that's something that my pastor knows about. And I want to tell you today, I want to I want to affirm uh, to you today that we've all been there. I'm going to just be the first one to raise my hand and say I've been there. I've had so many doubts in in the past and it's tough you know these questions come along and you're like what is going on like i don't know if this is even true you know you have that attitude of like "Hmm, like is this even true and if this is true for you today if this is something that you have gone through or are going through i want to affirm that you're not alone i want to i want to tell you that your thoughts your questions they matter to god And I want to say this, he does, in fact, meet you. God does, in fact, meet you where you are. By his grace, he does not leave you where you are. I'm going to say that one more time because someone missed it. He does, in fact, meet you where you are. But by his grace, does not leave you as 
you are. And today, I want to look at an interaction. I want to see a story in the scripture that talks about uh, Jesus meeting Thomas where he was at. Today, we're going to be moving on from Luke's gospel. I know we've been there for such a long time, uh, but now we're going to move on to John chapter 20, and we're going to be in verses 24 to 31, actually 29. John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29. I'm reading from the ESV, so if you might have a little different version, that's fine. It all says the same thing. So, cool. John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29. Now, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord, but he has said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is the word of the Lord. This is the one that we trust in. And now this, resur- this interaction, I'm sorry, is a week after Jesus appears to the disciples. Now, we're not really sure. There's a lot of uh, assumptions, speculation on why Thomas was not there. Uh, that that night or that day that he appeared to the disciples the first time, but he wasn't with them. Thomas just wasn't with them. Uh, But here, eight days later, the scripture says Thomas was there and uh, he he was there. And as as we can see, like the first thing that, that, that stood out to me was the disciples are like hyped. And these are people that have walked with Thomas. These are people that have, um, eaten with him, slept with him, you know, it's people that he can trust. Yet, when they come to him and say, we have seen the Lord, the disciples are like, we have seen the Lord, the risen Lord. He's like, nah, no. And I'm like, what? Like, Thomas, you should believe, right? But he's like, no, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where their nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. He will not believe. And this is like the immediate conflict in scripture that we see. Thomas was hesitant to acknowledge the risen Christ. He was hesitant because like many of us, he wants proof. He wants proof that Jesus is risen and he won't believe until he sees all the things that he's requested, right? All the things that don't meet or meet his requirements of seeing Jesus face to face. But when Jesus shows up, his reaction, Jesus's reaction to Thomas's questions, to Thomas's doubts, is really beautiful, I think. Jesus doesn't belittle Thomas. He, he doesn't make him feel dumb for his doubt. No, instead, he affirms his belief by appearing to him and telling him, do what you wanted to do. Here I am. Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. He says, Thomas, stop doubting and believe. I'm here. And often, you know, we give Thomas a bad rap. We give Thomas, you know, uh, uh, he, he's just like, oh, he's doubting Thomas, right? Carlitos actually did um, uh, a little video, uh, I think it was like last week, on the, on the page, on the Instagram, and he said that this idiom, Doubting Thomas, this is where we get it from, right? Because he's doubting. He's saying, nah, I'm not going to believe until I see Jesus for, you know, all the questions that he asks and the doubts. And, but we can learn much from this encounter. We can learn so much from this man and just in general about the things that he um, says or the interaction with Jesus. There's two things that we see in, in, in particular. 
Jesus did not, I repeat, did not rebuke Thomas for his questions. He simply answers them. Jesus answers Thomas's questions, his doubts. While we, and this is a testimony for me and you, may we might not receive God's answers as quickly as we want, but a sincere and loving relationship with Jesus allows his followers to seek him out with their questions. In other words, we can go to him confidently. Our doubts, our questions, like I said before, are important to God, and he listens. We must go before him, just like Thomas did. I know he gets a bad rap, but it, it, look at this man's heart. He wanted to believe. He wanted to see. And Jesus shows up. We can go to him confidently. Number two, Thomas went on to serve God. He preached, for those of you that do not know, he preached, he preached in India and was killed by a spear in his back. The church is there, there right now because of him, because of a man that asked a question, a man that once had doubts and now is willing to die for Jesus. Isn't that amazing? And that reaffirms the point. Jesus meets his followers where they are. And this is not only true for Thomas, it's true for many of us out there. And maybe uh, I love this because I think in an age of social media and just the digital age, right? There's so much information and it could, it could divert us from the path that Christ has for us. This is true for many of you that are watching. Maybe you've passed it or maybe you, you're there right now. And I want to let you know that you are not alone because I, too, have gone through this. I'm no exception. Um, I love Jesus with all my heart. I really do. But there is no way that I can stand here before you today and say, yeah, I, I've never had a doubt. I've always been faithful. I tried to be faithful, but during college, it was rough. It was so tough. It felt like every class that I went into was trying to um, was trying to debunk God. It was trying to say, no, God doesn't exist. If you have religion, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry for you. you. You have such a small mind. And, you know, coming into this, like before this, I had no theological education. I wasn't prepared for all, any of this. So I started researching on my own. But those years, those four years of my life, um, and this is, you know, just four years ago, I just graduated. So I'm thinking to myself, it was tough. I remember being skeptical. I remember thinking, okay, is God there? Just like Thomas asked. But I praise God that he allowed me to go through that. I praise him. I praise him because it made me stronger. It made me stronger in the faith. And sometimes these struggles, these doubts, these questions that we have, God allows so that it helps us or it pushes us to seek him out more, to seek a deeper faith in Jesus. Again, Jesus meets his followers where they are. This is true for me and this is true for you. He meets you where you are. Maybe you have been a little skeptical like Thomas. Maybe you've been uh, a little skeptical about even Jesus or this whole church situation. But again, this is the beautiful thing about this all. Jesus does not abandon you. He does not abandon me in our unbelief. He does not leave us in our uncertainty. Although we might not receive the, the beautiful blessing of Thomas and the disciples of seeing Jesus face to face, Jesus says, those, I'm going to read it again because I don't want to mess it up, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Yet have believed. 
this is everything. Like I, I was reading this and I'm like, I'm blessed. I'm blessed because I believe that Jesus has risen. And this is not something that is I'm holding or, you know, Christ is telling us to hold. No, he's telling us to preach this all across the world, just like Thomas did and all the disciples did. To tell everyone, guys, this is the truth. This is what Christ came to preach, that he was going to come, he was going to die, and he was going to resurrect. And now we can have, remember that word, life everlasting. We can have eternal life in him and through him. I'm going to say this. um, Christianity ultimately comes down to something more than a theological question. In the end, it is all about a person, not an opinion. The questions are just the beginning. The, I could even uh, interchange that with the doubts are just the beginning of the journey. But the answers come finally in experience, in reaching out to touch and to be touched ourselves by those nails, scarred hands, Jesus meets his followers where they are. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, there's a beautiful story that talks about a man. He's a blind man. And he's been blind for forever. I believe it says that, yeah, from, from birth. And he, he, Jesus is walking through this large crowd his name is Bartimaeus, and Bartimaeus is a blind man. He, he is someone that's pushed out in the margins. He's someone that nobody looks at as high class, right? Or, you know, he's really no one in society. But as he hears that people are, are screaming about this Jesus character, Jesus of Nazareth, he starts to shout. Son of David, have mercy on me. And then everyone's like, be quiet. (laughs) Don't talk. Son of David, have mercy on me, he says again. Then Jesus stops and he calls him. And Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? He says, I want to see. Go, Jesus says, your faith has healed you. And I read that story and I compare it to everything that we've been talking about because Bartimaeus could not see Jesus either, just like you and I. He could not see Jesus, but he heard about Jesus. He heard him. He heard his voice. His faith, his ability to rely and trust in Jesus, saying, Son of David, have mercy on me, is the faith that God seeks from you and I today. Us being willing to rely and trust in Him when everything seems to be going wrong. Even when we doubt, hear this, even when we doubt, going back to God and saying, I might not have all of this together. I might not know what is happening right now, but I still trust. I still have faith. Do what only you can do, Lord. Give me the faith I need to surpass this uphill battle. Do what only you can do, Lord. He is the one that gives faith. Before this, Thomas doubted and he did not see Jesus. And then when Jesus comes in the presence of the disciples once more and Thomas, he believes Jesus is the one that gives us the faith. He is the one that provides the faith needed. And that's what I'm saying today, that this faith, the one that we're talking about, is complete reliance and trust in God, even when we do have these doubts. And I want to push you today. I want, I want to encourage you today to ask God for more faith. If it comes from Him and we have direct access to Him, why not go to Him today? Why not go to Him and ask, God, give me more faith, please. The truth is, the truth is this, that the truth is one person, <laughs> the person of Jesus. 
Him crucified and Him risen. Faith is possible because of what He did on the cross that day. And on the third day, He rose. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We can't see life everlasting, but we know that it's there. We have the faith. We have the confidence that Jesus said or is who he said he was. And that's all we have. And we trust in that because of people like this, because of Thomas and all the other disciples that wrote all these things down. We trust in that and we have hope for that. Thomas believes because Jesus shows up and he meets him where he is. He does not rebuke him. He does not belittle him. He, do, he, he reaffirms Thomas's faith. He lets him know, know that he is seen, he is known, and he is loved. Just as Bartimaeus searches for Jesus, saying, Son of David, have mercy on me. You can come before him today with all your defects, with all your doubts, knowing that he is faithful, he is good, he is willing. And that he sees you, he knows you, and he loves you. I encourage you today to walk alongside him as he has been calling your name this whole time. Call on him today. I love you guys so much. I hope you have this beautiful day, whoever you're with. If it's with your mothers or your fathers, I pray that it be a blessing that you hear this. That even through in the midst of doubts, you can still have that faith that Christ is risen and Christ is good. I love you and I'm going to be praying for you guys all the more.